why should they buy your plug instead of somebody else's? Because the money goes in my pocket. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Good answer. Uh, Good. But seriously, there are so many great plugs out they there. Are. And they I, are. I'll never... Uh, I, I send people to other guys. They, you know, try this guy's plugs. There's a lot of talented builders out there. Most of them are good friends of mine, and we get along great, so why not, you know, send someone in their direction, if they, particularly if they're making something that I maybe I don't make. Welcome to the Surfcasters Journal Night Fishing Podcast. Our mission is to share our passion of surf fishing by bringing you interviews and conversations with some of the sport most fascinating people. I am your host, Zenoff Roman, co-founder of Surfcasters Journal Magazine at surfcastersjournal.com, book author, and of course, an avid surfcaster. So let's jump right into today's episode. It is my pleasure to introduce Larry Wentworth from Big Fish Bait Company. We go way back to the SOL and SP.com days. We fished together in Cuddyhunk for years and years, it seems the same weekend. So, Larry, welcome to Nightfish Podcast. Thanks, Zeno. Thanks for having me. Listen, I understand that you took your kids fishing, right? And then instead of them catching a fishing bug, it was you who caught it. It was me. Exactly. How, how did that happen? Uh, I, I had fished my whole life, um, but mostly freshwater. And um, I was separated and divorced and looking for something to do with the kids. Uh, we were at the beach one day and they run up out of the water and they said, um, there's a bunch of fish swimming around us. So I went down to see what it was. And I don't think I'd ever seen a striper before, but uh, we went down in the water and there was all these schoolies around them, and they said, uh, can we try fishing for stripers? So, like the next weekend, um, I got my dad's old fishing gear out of the basement. I didn't have any surf gear at the time. This was probably like uh, 99, 1999. That sounds funny to say, but... Uh, yeah, it's a while ago. And his, his equipment was like from the 50s, uh, old pen squitters and... Dacron line, just crap, just crap. And I went to the bait shop on the way uh, to get some some bait or whatever. I bumped on a friend of mine, uh, my buddy Warren, and he happened to be on his way down to Halgut to do some striper fishing. So he said, why don't you just come on, meet me down there, and I got some extra rods. And we went down there, and uh, the kids hooked, the kids hooked, each hooked up with a striper that day, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And of course, from that time on, I'm the one that got hooked. I mean, I just went full bore from there uh, into surf casting. So t give me the progression from, you know, getting hooked on fishing to making plugs. Obviously, we don't have to jump on it all at once because it's a, it's a lifetime of things. And it's still today. I, I assume that most of you guys who make plugs are still learning and still doing still your thing. Still learning. But what was, what was the, the thing? Obviously, you like fishing, but who, what was the influence? What was the reason? Why would even, how would you even figure out that you can make a plug? Well, I started to get into it because I didn't, surprisingly, I didn't have a lot of money. So um, I bought a cheap uh, spin cast surf fishing outfit and I, I just started doing some surf casting and I was horrible at it to begin with. Just horrible. We were all horrible took, at it. I mean bad. I just was, uh, it took me like a year to catch my first striper. Seriously, it was, it was, it was bad. Same dude, same. The learning curve was, was pretty wide. And, um, over time, uh, like I said, I caught that first striper and I got to be a little better at it. I think I started out with like chunk bait, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, never been a big chunk bait fisherman. Uh, it's kind of boring. So it kind of is what led me to begin getting into uh, artificials and throwing plugs and that kind of thing. Um, I mean, I got better. At, I, I was terrible at that, fishing plugs. I started out with... Gibbs pencil poppers, and I was uh, amazed at the time. This was about 2000 uh, at the price of these Gibbs plugs. I mean, $17 for a plug to me seemed kind of insane. Um, 
but I picked up some Gibbs plugs and uh, I just wasn't good at it. Uh, Mass Bass had their uh, annual fishing show, uh, I think it was 01, 2001, and there was a surf caster from um, Plum Island up by Gloucester who was going to give a seminar. His name's Steve Pappos. So I figured I'd, I'd, you know, get some good information, go sit in on the seminar, and Steve was great. Uh, we're friendly now. We're, we're friends today, and, um, you know, he gave me a lot of good pointers, uh, and one of the most important things he he said that day was uh, was retrieve speed. Um, you just can't you just can't take a plug out of the water, throw it out there. You might get lucky, but you have to, as you know, as everybody knows, kind of find how the fish want it. Whether it's slow or a medium retrieve, really splashy. Sometimes you got to work it a little bit to find out how the fish like it. But that was the one thing that Steve Papo said was retrieve speed. And uh, I began to get better with the plugs, and from there, um, I joined uh, Mass Bass, of course, and got involved with that club, and you meet a lot of people, uh, you get a lot of information, you start to make friends. Um, then I started venturing out down Cape Cod. We, we began renting a house uh, down in Wellfleet with the kids, and... Um, that kind of fueled the fire quite a bit. Next thing you know, I have a 85 Jeep CJ, rod racks on the front, the, the whole thing. Down there fishing all the time, uh, fish all night, come home early in the morning, go to work all day. It was just, it just became an addiction. You know, and then uh, one of the sites I go on, uh, Stripe Dash Bass, um, I got hooked on that and there was a, there was a great uh, plug building forum um, on Stripe Dash Bass. So I started to hang out in there quite a bit, get friendly with a lot of the builders and seeing these beautiful plugs that they were making. Just unbelievable work. And I've always been uh, kind of a tinkerer. I like to, you know, work with wood, work with my hands. That's right. You got a background in, in woodworking too, right? Yeah. Somewhat. Yeah. So, I, mean, I mean, just a, a handyman. Right. I never had any formal training or anything. Hey, you save yourself a lot of money being a handyman these days, I'll tell you that much. Uh, well, you should come see my house. I've saved us <clears> quite a bit of money. Well, I'm working looking at it right house. now. I know guys can't see it, but it looks very pretty from here. Yeah, well, <laughs> there's a lot going on here, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I, and before you get to the plugs, I mean, I want to just, I, I don't want to lose this moment because I don't think that people... A lot of people are going to remember, but a lot of people will. The SB.com in those days, I mean, not only did they make great plugs, but the guys had the coolest names. Hey, you, yeah. know, you remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it, it was always when we first started meeting each other and hanging out, I always hated calling, to, uh, you know, somebody Slipknot yeah. or Bassmaster or... You know, my, my name was Big Fish on there. That's kind of where right. Big Fish Bait Company came from. Not that I catch any big fish, but that was my name anyway. But it, it, it was easier to get to know their real names. So, and I'm still friendly with all those guys. It's 20 years later, and, um, you know, all those talented guys. And John Habs was on there, and Steve Silver, Cape Sams. Yeah, I, I thought at the time that was really, really a special place to go for a lot of people. It, we were it regular was. fishermen, even if you weren't into the plugs. The, the guys were super nice, and I would, and I never made a plug in my life, but I would read, and I got to be friends with all of those guys. They were all excellent fishermen to begin with. Uh, right. Mac, who being one of them, the professor. Plug, I mean, yeah. Jesus, there were some brilliant people in there. And uh, John Habs. I mean, John was like bigger than life uh, figure yeah, in those great, days. Great guy. Yes, he was. Now, did any of them in particular influence you more than others? It's hard to say. They, they all influenced me, uh, just seeing all their work. And they were also helpful with a, a guy that had never made a plug before. And I, had, I drove them bonkers with questions. I must have driven them just straight up the wall. But they were so helpful, all of them. Um, and I, I began to get good at making plugs, and I was really enjoying it. And um, they had get-togethers a couple times a year, so all the plug builders would 
get together, whether it was down South County in Rhode Island. It was a plug or, fest or uh, something like that, right? What was the name? Yeah, of we had an every winter we had a plug right. plug fest, and uh, all the builders would get together. And uh, M and D or whatever the shop was, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I remember. Yeah. yeah, Mike Thomas's shop. Yeah. Do you remember the first fish you caught on your own plug? Yeah, I do. I, it wasn't one of my designs. Um, I think the first plug I put in the water that I made was a knockoff of John Hab's two ounce needlefish, and uh, I love that needlefish. That, by the way, oh, it was unbelievable. And my, my my knockoff was pretty good. It was it was as good as John's. And I went out with my buddy uh, Slinger. That was his uh, his name, Matt Stidstone. Yeah, we he was a big eel guy, if I remember right. Yeah, yeah, yep, Slinger. He's a good uh, guy. I'm going to tell you the story where he cleaned my clock one day in Cuddy Hunt. But go ahead. <laughs> so um, we headed out one night to uh, Boston Beach, and we happened to bump into um, Bruce May, who was Slipknot, and Bassmaster Dave Manzi, Manzi yeah. uh, two other guys who were great, great plug builders. And um, we hammered fish all night, the four of us. Fish up to 20, 25 pounds, like every cast. And uh, I still have that plug. It is absolutely beat the shit it has all the scars and uh, i even pulled the, the belly split ring pulled out from catching so many fish on it that night and unfortunately i had a couple of extra ones with me but um yeah we had a great time that night and i was i was just hooked from from then just i don't like that you keep using the pun hooked but it's just the way it is um Another plug that I that I knocked off early on was one of John Huff's Burnsy Bait Company. He made a great um, what was a surf howdy. howdy you know yeah. Surf yeah, howdy. yeah, I have them. I still have brand new ones still in the basement. I, I, yeah. I now that he's not around, I, I just feel bad of taking him out of package. Honestly. Yeah, John was a great yes. guy, and he, that plug was just a fish slayer. And that was an, that was another one early on that that I fished. You know what you said before? Uh, I I was kind of thinking about what you said. I didn't want to interrupt you. Uh, you know, you mentioned that when he told you about uh, the retrieve, how important that was. And obviously, you were just starting out. I think sometimes we lose the track of time when we get older and we're in this. And we're like, wow, well, I mean, everybody knows that. But think about it. There was a time when we didn't know that, when that yeah. was fascinating. You're talking about sucking up plugs. I remember going on Jones Beach and losing every single plug in my bag to a bale closing on me <laughs> every single and, this, and listen we've all done this that this is a half an hour walk from the car so you know if anybody goes like oh this guy wrote the book you know no there was a time when i knew nothing so for all of you that are just starting out today look there's a long road it's a beautiful road but you know yeah. all of us started somewhere so I, yeah. I think that's pretty cool you know and i i think that's pretty cool that you remember the the plugs that you caught a fish on i mean I, how, how can i forget and then john both john habs and uh, john huff they were two of the guys on that site and they were so helpful uh in my own progress uh learning how to to build plugs and and they their beautiful work pushed me to try and do the best job that i could do you find that today's um it's different amongst you guys, or is it the old guard is still the same and the new guard is? And I'm not I'm not trying to paint anyone in any different ways, but I know it has changed quite a bit. I'm I'm just curious if if it's the same amount of help being extended today as it was then. I, I don't think there's as much help. Those forums are pretty, uh, as we were saying earlier, they're pretty quiet now because everybody's on Facebook, Facebook yeah. and. Um, I don't know, back then everybody just seemed to help each other out. But today I'm still friends with uh, a lot of those guys and I'm friends with a lot of other guys who have companies building plugs. So there's a good community there. If somebody needs something, we can reach out. I can reach out to Ryan Smith or Don Gamelli from After Hours. And if I need something, if they need something, we help each other out. Back, back, back in the 2000s, there could be a lot of ego between builders and uh, I don't know I, know I I tried to never really get involved in that I like to get along with everybody well to be fair you were just new so you really didn't have any standings to get into those conversations no. and the other thing no. was that was a fairly a new uh 
way of communicating for everyone. So, you know, it was it was a free for all for, for a while until people kind of figure out who wants to be there and who doesn't. Uh, yeah. But it was very helpful in a lot of ways because all of a sudden, all those conversations that you guys share in private about plug building, you could ask. And if this guy wasn't going to answer, somebody else was going to answer. So there was a lot of sharing. I do remember that. Yeah. So today you're making a lot of plugs and most of them are obviously, listen, I'm not going to suggest that anybody makes anything original. Okay. Everybody's got their own spin on the classic of some kind. Right. What is it that you, I know you make extraordinary amount of plugs and I know you don't sell all of them. You make them for yourself, like every plug builder. What is it that you like to make the most? That's tough. I like to make all of them. I, I enjoy the process from turning to machining the bodies and um, there are times it gets monotonous if you're turning a hundred of a particular plug and it's just one after the other and it just kind of gets crazy but I which one do I enjoy making the most for some reason I have to say pencil poppers they're, they're a lot simpler to build um, there's just a lot fewer steps involved I can make them a lot faster than say like a metal lip swimmers, there's lip cuts and belly weighting and all kinds of uh, filling in holes and sanding and there's a lot more processes involved um, with a metal lip swimmer. Your surf star, um, it's probably my the favorite. Yeah, right. The prey swimmer is one of my favorite metal lip swimmers of all time. And and not because everybody should go run and buy one because well they should buy it i mean I, it's a great plug but the thing the, right at two of those two two of yellows and then one of every other color but the thing is it's such a limited um application plug because of its lip you know it's a surf the lip so it's not a z lip and i mean i'm i'm not going to i'm going to be straight on and said that it's not as nearly uh, as useful in most situation it is as the z-lip because the z-lip you can do a lot with it you can't do with your plug you can't do the rub water you can't do it doesn't cast as well all the uh, but I, can, I, can i make a correction on the rough not water? yet not yet let me finish <laughs> but i mean in, I, I have a bone to pick okay with that's fine fair enough fair enough that's why you're here right <laughs> but but i i gotta say like when the conditions are right and you can like i'm gonna say it like this when i can use a red fin I can use that plug in most yeah. in most situations, but the action on that plug is stupendous for you know when the uh, uh, conditions are. Now you go ahead, you can you can rebuke my uh, rough water thing. Well, surfaces are great plugs. Right. I mean, traditionally they're a, a top water plug, calmer water, as you know. Creek Creek Chub was the original surfaces, right? Creek Chub was the original surfster. Yep, um, fabulous plug, and uh, that was the first metal lip plug. Um, that I made and um, it, it swims pretty true to an original surfster. Now the difference with my surfster is it's belly weighted and most surfsters are not belly weighted. Now you talk about surfsters not being able to operate in rougher water. I've fished my prey in the Cape Cod Canal with a, with a ripping uh, tide and it'll hold. I've caught huge fish down the Cape Cod Canal. I'm not. I'm um, not suggesting, Dolly, not to pick a bone with you. I, when I say rough condition, I don't mean the current. I mean the wave action. I, yeah, I wave mean, action. Like storm wave, action. You know what I'm saying? Like you. Yeah, yeah. When it's when it's stormy. That's yeah, you saying. need something I, I, heavy. Yes, and, and you can, a Z lip can go. A Z lip. Underneath. Right. This yeah. one's going to get thrown around. That's what I. Mean. No, no, not in the current. The current's a whole. Actually, your plug in a current just becomes more crazy than it normally is, <laughs> because the action gets a little bit faster because the lip gets caught in that current. Yes, yeah, surfs is a fun fun plug to. Uh, speaking of get, speaking of canals that you brought that up, you used to be a big canal guy. Yeah, well, I, I was fishing down the Cape for years, like I was saying earlier, in um, the early 2000s, the fishing down there was just fabulous. I mean, everybody that was anybody was down there fishing, and we would bump into all kinds of guys down there. Um, as the years went on, like 04, 05, um, the area got inundated with seals down there, and by the time 07 rolled around, you couldn't even... You couldn't catch a fish. They, the seals just run along the shoreline and just seem like all the bass would not come come in close. 
So the fishing down there, unfortunately, um, that was a time when if you drove up and down Route 6 to P-Town through Wealthy and Truro, you, every car, every truck had a, a bumper-mounted rod rack. It was all about fishing. There were campers rigged for fishing. Um, those times down there are gone. Uh, and most of that's due to the fact that the, the fishing just dried up. You can't even find a bait shop south of um, East Ham anymore, all the way down to Provincetown. That's kind of sad. Yeah. What, what was you the know? shop that used to be down there? used to sell books to Nelson's? A Nelson's, then, yeah. Uh, the, yeah. Long time shop down there. And when the fishing kind of dried up down there, I, I lived north of the canal, so it was a natural progression for me to to begin fishing the canal. And again, I was terrible at it. <laughs> that was another learning curve, but you know, you just put your time in like, Listen, like you I'll, always do. I'll admit I'm a little intimidated by the canal. I don't fish it and I see the guys, I mean, I'm not stupid. I can I kind of figure out stuff that I need to do, but uh, as always, when you put in a new situation, you need to learn. Uh, I'm sure you, you have gravitated to kayak fishing. I remember a while ago, and, and you'd spend a lot of time on it, right? And, and I so, do, yeah. Right, so you have special plugs that you like off the kayak? Same plugs I use in the surf. Same thing? They transition. Most of them transition perfectly. Of course, uh, I'm not going to fish some of my, uh, my bigger pencils and things like that from the kayak. I use more of a lighter setup, so... But uh, I troll some of the, the big metal lips I make from the kayak, so they transition perfectly uh, from surf to kayak. So do you, do you what, you troll with, with one, and then you pencil pop another, and then you got a bait on no. a third rod? Is no, one at, a, one at a time. <laughs> just joking. One at a time. I got enough going on with one fishing rod. <laughs> just, just... I'm bad enough with one fishing rod. <laughs> Yeah, listen. Don't get me going. Remember when we used to go to Cuddy Hunk, man? That was, that was, we had a great time. You, me Cuddy, Cuddy Hunk was another transition because uh, because of the fishing down the Cape. You know, I buddied up with uh, Don Gamelli, yes. who was on uh, from After Hours, who was on Striped Dash Bass, and we became close. And uh, we began venturing over to Cuddy Hunk. And there's another learning curve when you. Start up over there, and then I bump into Jamokes like yourself over there. Yeah, for whatever reason, the, we used to spend the same week there uh, in June on the same moon for years, and we would there would be a, why is a fly fishing guys. Remember? <laughs> no, yeah, the fly oh, yeah. Fishing I had all my. The guys would, I had all my fly fishing rods right, with me. Fly fishing no, guys I, would take the whole club, and we would have the whole place to ourselves because you couldn't get another room. <laughs> it was awesome. It, by the way, now you reminded me about the slinger. So we were cutting hunk at the Southwest Point. I'm on a rock in a wetsuit, and he's behind me with a bucket of eels. A bucket with yeah. a weight, not a waders. He had waders or hip woods. I don't know what he had. But the thing is, I remember distinctively the plug landing at my feet behind me because I was on a rock so far. Yeah. And every like. I know the rock you were Right, on. exactly. And every like tw 20 seconds, I'd be like, Zzz, and I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. By the end of the night, I think he had like six or eight thirties and I had like a bunch of schoolies on a plug. But yeah. another lesson learned of, you know, when the eels are in, in, in the when they're in the game and they want them, you can throw all the plugs you want. Yeah, I, I love fishing the eels. I don't do it much anymore because I'm kinda you know, I'm hooked on fishing the plugs that, that I build. That's that's kinda what drives me to fish. I enjoy that. What what drives you to make all these different plugs? I mean, I know you're not a big selling Bottom, type of guys. You don't you don't do the shows. You don't sell to the stores. You, you... I I had them in stores uh, for a number of years, and I did the shows for a number. Oh, of you years. did? Okay. Yeah, I did the the Rhode Island, the Rissa show, and I did uh, the Plum Island show and the Mass Pass show, and um, after a while, uh, they just they just sell themselves. I don't really. I mean, I enjoy doing the shows, but it's a lot of work to set up for those shows, as you agree, know. Agree, agree. You know, a lot of work. And it's, it's to be at Rissa for three days on those hard floors, I mean, I was hobbled for a week with the shin splints. You know what I'm saying? So much of the bad coffee for three days. It's like, it, yeah. was, it was brutal. But I mean, it was, yeah. listen, 
to me, it's like you get to see all of you guys that I don't get to see of all the Jersey shows, the Long Island shows. I love the shows. You know, so I love the shows, but I actually love attending them more than doing them. I, I will tell you that, you know, go yeah. there, have a good time. Uh, so, yeah, from that standpoint, do you feel like you you able to express yourself in certain ways by making plugs? Is that is is this is this part of uh, artistic expression for you in some ways? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a creative guy. I, you know, I like to make I make so many different styles of plugs. I, I do kind of get bored. So I like to, you know, work on different things and uh, the creative aspect of it. Uh, I enjoy very much from the woodworking through the paint work. Uh, and there were times when, you know, I wanted to make the really fancy paint jobs. And when you're pumping out four or five, six hundred plugs a year, you don't have a lot of time to, you know. I might make a couple hundred more than that some years. Depends on what I'm building. But um, I, I learned after a while, just people just want fishy looking plugs. They, I want my plugs in the water. I don't want them on a guy's shelf, you know, in his collection. Uh, I much more prefer people to be fishing the plugs that I make, and I think that they do. Because um, I get a lot of good response from customers who use them, and that, that really makes me happy because it sure isn't making my wallet too much fatter. But uh, the creative aspect of building plugs is what I enjoy, and hearing back from the people that use them, that's really the, the best part of um of building and meeting so many people, so many great people. Yeah, I, I enjoy I that. I think that's a that's a big part of it. And I was actually just about to ask you about the some of the artistic, uh, but we don't have to go into that since you already just answered my question on your own. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it is what it is. I mean, everyone has different feelings on it, and, and I understand that. What would you tell a complete newbie that buys a plug? Who's never fished plugs before? Yeah, the guy that's just getting into sport. I'd start them out with pencils. Pencil poppers is uh, it, it's a relatively easy form of plug fishing. Anybody can do it. Um, metal lip swimmers, they take a little more patience and a little more uh, knowledge uh, of the areas you're fishing. But pencil poppers work any place. And uh, Again, I keep hearing Steve Pappos in my ear. It's all about retrieve speed. So I would tell a customer, you know, take this pencil popper and just throw it out on the surface. And uh, the best advice I can give him is to vary their retrieve speed. Um, I was never one to really rip my plugs across the water. Like I see some guys, they get that fishing rod between their legs and they're shaking it crazy. I, I call it... Uh, I hope the Jersey guys don't get mad. I, think I call it Jersey fishing. Poor Jer but, um, Jersey guys get beat up for a lot of things. Well, I see guys down the canal, they fish, they fish the plugs too fast too. And, uh, you know, you just got, you got to find the way the fish like it. But I would tell somebody, buy, buy a pencil popper and start there. Why should they buy your plug instead of somebody else's? Because the money goes in my pocket. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Good answer, uh, but seriously, there are so many great plugs out there, there and I, are. I'll never, I, I send people to other guys, I, you know, try this guy's plugs. There's a lot of talented builders out there. Most of them are good friends of mine and we get along great. So why not, you know, send someone in their direction, if they, particularly if they're making something that I, maybe I don't make, you know what I mean? Or if it's a different size or. What do you, you know, what plug do you like to fish with most? I mean, I know it depends on the condition. It's a stupid question, okay? But we all kind of gravitate to, to our own favors, you know? Yeah, I like, you know, that's a, that's a tough call. I get asked that question a lot. It comes down to uh, whether I want to fish top water. There's nothing like a smash on a pencil popper. Sunrise, sunset, any time. But I think there's just something a little bit more special about fishing a metal lip under cover of darkness. You can't see anything. You throw that plug out there and you're working it in slow and all of a sudden that rod tip just just bends right down to the water. And uh, you know you got a good one on and you can see the splash. Maybe there's just a little bit of moon illuminating the splash in the water and it makes it really exciting. So uh, I think I fish pencils mostly, but uh, just out of necessity. But those times when I'm fishing uh, metal lip swimmers are pretty special. 
If you were not going to fish your plug, whose plugs are you going to fish first? Okay, listen. Wow, I'm, you're I'm, really, you're really going to back I'm me really up. I'm really going to back you up. Well, no, not, not this is not this is not um, try to pick somebody else's plug or recommend another builder. What I'm saying is, is there something that you won't make that you just the something is just so good that it just it's not worth your time. Daughters, I don't make a daughter. Uh, they're a tough plug to make. I've never really fished daughters. Uh, I know a lot of guys love daughters. I know you love yeah. daughters. I've, I've heard you talk about fishing daughters. Once in a while, but, yeah. Uh, but this, I just figured there's there's enough guys out there making daughters. Tattoo was making daughters, and then uh, now Don Gamelli from After Hours makes a beautiful daughter. Um, that was just one I never wanted to tackle. But if I was if I was going to fish someone else's plug that I don't make, it would probably be a daughter, and it would probably be Don Gamelli's daughter from After Hours. Yeah, I was just talking to Don the other day. He's doing well. Okay, good, good, good. I'm glad to hear that. What is your favorite color to fish with? I know I'm not going to ask you what is your favorite color to paint because I, I, I think what other people want and what you want are probably two different things. But right. what is it that you like to fish with? If you were going to pick a paint color for your bag, what, what would it be in? My bunker. Okay. Um, I think most, most people are familiar with my bunker pattern. It's basically uh, just a silver with uh, some variations of color on the side and some traditional bunker spots. But day or night, that color always produces for me. A lot of guys, you, they talk about the, the uh, dark plugs on dark nights and light plugs on light nights. And you know, the, the dark plug thing really never panned out for me as much as I tried that theory. I mean, there were a few times it worked on particular nights, but I've thrown a bunker colored prey or a bunker colored uh, Z lip or a Beastmaster, as I, as I call them, uh, the ones that I make. And uh, that bunker color produces, it doesn't matter if it's a uh, new moon, uh, a half moon, it, it's just a productive color for me. Color, uh, you pick a color because it, it gives you comfort, you feel confident. Uh, that was going to be my in, next in question. Like, that's because I read mine. So. No, okay. I was, I was gonna. <laughs> that's was gonna be my next question because I'm often wonder. Like, I know you yeah, like yellow. You like bunker. Like, how much does this has to do with a person's confidence in that plug, and how much it actually has to do with the color itself? Which, by the way, this is the question that we will never have the answer to. It's true. Uh, it's a very specific question, and everybody's answer is going to be different. Uh, I just feel by having an array of colors, a customer can, can come up and something's going to catch his eye that, that he likes. He likes something about that plug. And if he takes that particular color out and he catches on it, he, he builds confidence, not just in the plug itself, but in the color. And um, that's... Uh, that's all you can do is have confidence in a plug. I, I feel that you're 100% right there because I feel like once I got confidence in certain plug, the color was important only for me, but I refused to believe. Yes, there were specific nights that, you know, certain color was just going to kill it. I get that. Right. But if I, you know, like yellow needlefish and I had a green that night because I lost yellow and I wasn't catching any fish, it wasn't usually the color, you know. So my point is I have a, a huge amount of confidence in the actual plug and not the color. But the color just adds that little bit of, you know, this is my mojo plug, you know. But right. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I'm not a, I'm not a big, I, I know I say yellow, but to me, the plug itself is more important than the color. You know, the action. You mean as, as far as action? Uh, action at the time and the place where you're throwing it, it's more important than the color itself. Like there's so much more I, stuff that comes I into play. I 100% agree with you. Yeah. I think the action of a plug if I've had the question posed to me, maybe you were about to pose this question, is it the color or is it the action of the plug? I believe more in the action of a particular plug uh, than the color, um, by my personal experience. 
action is almost everything and, and with that action is how you work that plug how fast you work the plug you know the whole array of uh, the circumstance where you're fishing be it a current or a calm night in a boulder field you know you have to uh, you have to make that plug work so that that's part of your job as a fisherman is to impart the action to that plug there is built-in action but you have to you have to know how to work that plug to get it to do what you want to do how many plugs do you actually make the styles that you actually sell I had to write that down because I knew you were, I knew you were going to ask that question I make it's either 20 or 22 different different not different styles I might make uh, 14 different styles but like for instance with a pencil popper I make um, I think it's six different sizes I see and what weights. You're saying. So if I have a, the Beastmaster plug, I, ha, I have a, I have a large size, then I have a small size that's called the Mayhem Minnow. So there's there's variations on size for different styles. The Mayhem Minnow is that the uh, the jointed one? That's the little jointed one ounce. Wow. Yeah, wow. That, that's a sweet looking plug. It's a powerful little plug. Yeah. Let me tell you. Gets the job done. Salt water or fresh water, it's, it's a fun plug. Is it, as I heard, making those kind of plugs is as much as work as making two plugs? A jointed yes. plug? It definitely is more work than making two plugs. It's, uh, there are a lot of steps to that. That little mayhem minnow is a lot of work. A lot of, lot of hand work, a lot of machine work. Uh, people would be amazed what goes into uh, as opposed to making a pencil popper, which is really just a, a weighted stick, you know, with eyes. Um, but when you make a metal lip swimmer and you, you add a joint to it, it double it really doubles your amount of work. So I assume with that many plugs, you have a good excuse to tell your wife that you go and testing the product. You've heard it. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, what do I call it? Um, research and development. Yes. She's heard it before. She's in the other room. She's probably chuckling at me right now. <laughs> but she's out there fishing with me, and she fishes with me all the time. So I don't need any excuse to go fishing. I met your wife before, didn't I? Uh, one of the shows, I That's think. That's right. Yes. I do remember that. I do remember that. What about making the plugs give you most joy? I mean, is it is it the feedback that you get from people? I know it's not money. None of your guys are all doing the same job that I met you 20 years ago. If anything, some guys have got, got kind of uh, disappointed in the whole plug thing. Uh, it's got to be the labor of love. What is it? What is it that gives you the most joy? I love to work with my hands and I love to fish. So it kind of, it kind of embodies the two things I enjoy doing is woodworking and fishing. I call myself a starving artist. I think just about any plug builder, um, whether he does it part-time or if it's a full-time job, um, he's not getting rich. It's a lot of work, uh, and you have to be doing it as a labor of love. That's, that's a fact. You have to enjoy what you're doing. A lot of people begin building plugs, and, and they go full bore into the selling plugs, and two or three years, they're gone. They're just... That ju I think they just burn out, or they realize that there's really not a lot of money in it, you know. So was, there's a few guys out there that have been building plugs for 15, 20 years, even longer. Um, but those those guys are few and far between. I think it's uh, Gary Soldati and uh, Don Gamelli from After Hours, Ryan Smith, um, myself. Um, we've all been doing it, I think, for 15 or 20 years. And then there's, there's other guys who are uh, newer than us that make fabulous plugs, and uh, they've been around for a while. Guppy Laws makes makes great pencil poppers. Um, but it's it definitely comes down to a labor of love because it's a lot of work, and the guys, they really put themselves into it. I know I do. You should come by the shop sometime. I think people appreciate that, and I think that's why most of the referrals come from the word of the mouth and not you guys advertising. It's, it's other, other users who do well are usually the best salesmen for your product because they talk and tell other people and tell other friends about it. So what is the best way to contact you? You never had an online store. You probably found that to be a pain in the ass, had to update all the yeah. inventory. And I had one for a while. It was a real pain. Yeah, I can only imagine. Listen, I, I, I know all about that. So how do the people contact you? What's the best way? Uh, Facebook. I have a Facebook page, Big Fish Bait Company. 
Um, and you have these sales, right? The pop-up sales that you put the stuff on? Like, yeah, yeah, pop-up sales or flash sales, we call them. I just I run a bunch of plugs, and when they're ready to sell, uh, if, if you're on my page, I send out a notification, usually a day or so in advance, and I let them know um, what kind of plugs, what time the sale is, and uh, say it's 7 o'clock on a Tuesday night. People are usually sitting right by their keyboard with their finger on the trigger, and the plugs go pretty quick. It's, it must be nice to be so popular. It's not that not that nice. <laughs> it's not. It's a lot of work. <laughs> it really is. You mean the people don't shake your hands in Walmart and stop you and say, uh, oh, I know I used your plug. Yeah, I get a lot of there that. You I mean, that's fun. There that's a lot of it fun. It is. I, I love that. You know, I think to some extent that is the most satisfying part for me personally. Uh, I, I've had people on the street or at the movie theater. It's a little comfortable with the wife, but they're like, you know, just the fact that you help someone. I don't really care about all this other shit, okay? Right. The fact that someone got something out of that you created with your hands or me that wrote. Right. Or, you know, the magazine that we do, you know, even this podcast. You know, the fact that you help someone, to me, it's worth more than any other financial benefit because think about it yeah. at the end of the day you and i know each other for 20 years we're still in the same spot yeah you know we're doing the same things that because we love it we don't do it for anything. we enjoy reason. it that's yeah, right that's, that's all that is it, we we have a passion and we try and share that passion with whoever comes along i and i think helping this new generation understand what exactly have we seen and gone through and seen this uh, rise of a striped bass the collapse the rise and and back down it's kind of important for us to share um what we know so they can be more aware right. because we right. sure are not leaving this place as good as we found it uh, i've been people. saying that a lot lately yeah I, I understand that i understand that anything else that we didn't cover we could talk about how much fun cutty hunk was <laughs> How much fun <laughs> Cutty Hunk was. That was a lot of fun. We used to, I mean, when you start going to Cutty Hunk, when I started going to Cutty Hunk with Dawn, it became, it, over a, a couple of seasons, it became a who's who of surf fishing. Yeah, yeah, that was kind over, of, those I mean, days were cool, man. Everybody I met you there. over there and Tommy and your buddy Ray, yeah. Ray Crimmins. Yeah. Steve McKenna That's was right. there. I think Paul Melnick was yeah. there one time. Yeah, Bill Wetzel would call a lot yeah. of guys. Gar Gary Soldati is always out there. there. Yeah, it was like, yeah, who's who? You're right. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I got to get back out there. I haven't been out there in 10 years. So. Uh, we were there last year. We did some small fish uh, all, all the year before because this COVID shit's uh -huh. got me all wrapped up. What's My one? invitation must have got lost. Yeah, in well, you know, <laughs> yeah, I think you moved some <laughs> subsequently <laughs> or something. <laughs> But yeah, that was a lot of fun. We really, really fun. had a lot of fun. I mean, that was, uh, I, I missed that place. It, it's probably the most enjoyable place in the world for me to fish. Now, I won't say in the world, but in Northeast it is. I do like the tropical fishing. Yeah. Uh, but as a, as a place to just, not only it's such a great place because I feel like every cast it could be a world record bass, yeah, but the off hours, always that potential. That off hours, the camaraderie and just pure bullshit, just chilling out and sharing shit. And it was so good. And the people, I mean, the crew, whoever was going there, you know, it yeah. wasn't like somebody who was maybe into fishing. It was all of us who were just obsessed with fishing. Yeah, there were no uh, no newbies out there. Was, you have to be pretty experienced to uh, work some of those rocks out there. And Robbie, remember Robbie? We used to walk. Uh, we used to walk from Southwest Point all the way to down underneath and back. And in oh, waders, yeah. uh, no wetsuits in those days. We I didn't wear them. So no, the last couple of seasons I was out there, I had a wetsuit. But um, yeah, wearing waders was uh, doing the mile and a half or two miles across the island on a. On an 85 degree night walking on a bowling balls man that was yeah and then you come back and then you found the fish right underneath the club where you left three hours ago and said what yeah. did i go all yeah. the way around well the, the the big thing there you, you talk about the downtime when we weren't fishing we're all sitting there mesmerized by the water you, you're on an island like that you don't want to be sitting there you know chewing the fat you know bullshit with your buddies we all want to be fishing 24 hours 
but you, you learned early on you had to pick your spots and you had to get some rest and yeah b because every bird that in front of you dives in the water you're like uh, what was that what was that and then next thing you know you're torture. down in churches <laughs> pencil popping for four hours and then you take it an early nap because you're exhausted so you're yeah. right you had to pick and choose your spots yeah a lot of fun over there we'll have to get back over there again. i sure hope so soon all right, well, thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate that. Uh, I'll be going to put the sh in the show notes the information and the link to your Facebook page so people can Great. contact you. And thank you for spending some time with us today. Okay, buddy? And thank I, you very much, Zeno. I enjoyed and it. And I hope these show season resume at some point in the future so we can see each other again like we used to because this really sucks having to you know, so. do this. I'm sure you miss a lot of your friends, not just me, obviously. Yeah, I think everybody misses everybody. I know, I know. All right, stay well, my friend. Okay, Zeno, thanks, man. Bye -bye. Take care. We are grateful that you took time from your busy day to listen to the Surfcasters Journal Night Shift Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, we would love if you would share it with your fishing buddies and leave a rating and review to whatever app you use to listen to us. Your feedback and ratings help other surfcasters discover our podcast. Also check out our publication dedicated to surf fishing, Surfcasters Journal Magazine at surfcastersjournal.com. Tight lines and good fishing.